Night falls over the Pacific. The wind drags salt across volcanic cliffs. And somewhere in the dark, a shadow moves. A shape taller than a house, heavier than an elephant. Its face blank, yet alive with motion. Stone feet scrape the earth. It leans, it sways. And with a sound like thunder muffled in sand, it takes a step. The villagers are silent now. Only the chant continues, deep, rhythmic, ancient. A song not of worship, but of engineering. For centuries, they said it was just a legend, that the statues of Easter Island walked. But in the end, the legend was the truth. Rapa Nui, known to the outside world as Easter Island, is one of the most remote inhabited places on Earth. A speck of volcanic land adrift in 2.5 million square miles of ocean. And yet, here, a civilization built something no one else ever dared. Nearly a thousand monolithic statues, called Moai, each carved from solid volcanic tuff. For centuries, explorers, missionaries, and scientists all asked the same question. How did they move them? Some said they dragged the statues across the island on wooden sleds, deforesting their paradise in the process. Others imagined rafts, rollers, or even alien intervention. But in 2025, a team led by anthropologist Carl Lipo of Binghamton University and Terry Hunt of the University of Arizona did something extraordinary. They stopped guessing, they tested the myth. Their research, published in the Journal of Archaeological Science and featured in Archaeology Mag, combined 3D modeling, physics simulations, and full-scale field experiments. The conclusion shook the archaeological world, the statues weren't dragged, they walked. To the untrained eye, all Moai looked the same, solemn faces, heavy brows, long noses, staring toward the horizon. But Lipo and Hunt noticed something different about the statues found along ancient Rapa Nui roads. These particular Moai had D-shaped bases, flattened at the back but curved in front. Their bodies leaned forward, as if mid-stride. Their centers of mass sat slightly ahead of their feet dangerously unstable if they were meant to stand still. Why build a statue that wants to fall, unless it was meant to move? Using high-resolution scans and balance modeling, the researchers discovered that this subtle asymmetry wasn't an accident. It was functional design, a self-balancing system in stone. If pulled by ropes from alternating sides, each statue could rock, pivot, and walk forward in short, rhythmic steps. Its rounded belly and forward tilt made the motion natural even graceful. The very traits that seemed clumsy were actually mechanical genius. To test the theory, the team built a 4.35-ton replica Moai, carved to exact specifications of the originals. They tied ropes around its head, one on each side, one behind for control. Eighteen people stood ready. No pulleys, no wheels, no logs, just human rhythm. On command, the group pulled left, then right, left, right, left. The statue rocked, it leaned, and then, it began to move, step by step, it walked upright across the field, 100 meters in 40 minutes. The crowd of scientists, students, and locals fell silent. The motion was undeniable, the physics were perfect. The trick was balance, each shift of the rope tilting the statue just enough for gravity to carry it forward, while friction caught its base. It wasn't dragged, it was led. And for the first time in centuries, a moai walked again, just as the islanders said it once did. When Lipo and Hunt presented their findings, something remarkable happened. The physics wasn't what surprised people, it was the cultural humility. For years, RAPA Nui's oral traditions had claimed that the Moai walked to their AHU, the ceremonial platforms that line the coasts. Western archaeologists had laughed, they assumed, walking, was poetic metaphor, a way of saying, transported by magic. But what if the myth was an encoded memory the oral preservation of an ancient engineering method? Elders of Rapa Nui had said, the statues walked to their places because they had mana a sacred force. Now, we know the mana was real. It wasn't supernatural, it was mechanical. As Hunt once said in an interview, when we first saw it move, it sent chills through us. We realized, the people who built these things understood physics intuitively. 
In a single experiment, a thousand years of misunderstanding began to fade. So who first discovered this balance? How did ancient carvers, without metal tools, without wheels, design sculptures that could move themselves? Some researchers believe the knowledge evolved naturally. Over generations, builders refined the shape learning through failure, observing which statues cracked, toppled, or leaned too far forward. The survivors of that long experiment became templates for motion. Others suspect something deeper, a kind of cognitive geometry lost to modern minds. RAPA Nui's ancestors came from Polynesia, a culture of master navigators who could cross thousands of kilometers guided only by stars, waves, and wind. If they could read the ocean's rhythm, could they not also read the rhythm of stone? Some even suggest that the Moai's design mirrors natural forms pendulums, bodies in stride, resonance points that respond to movement. Not mystical, but deeply mathematical. Perhaps the builders didn't just carve idols, they built machines. Kinetic monuments that embodied motion and memory at once. When the Moai walked again in the 21st century, scientists noticed something strange, the movement felt familiar. It echoed patterns seen halfway around the world. At Stonehenge, some sarsen stones show wear suggesting upright rocking during placement. In ancient Egypt, reliefs depict statues being pulled upright while chanting, perhaps to maintain rhythmic balance. Even the Olmec heads of Mesoamerica, weighing 40 tons each, show base curvature and transport traces that hint at a similar logic. Across cultures separated by oceans in millennia, humans may have discovered the same truth that motion can come not from force, but from rhythm. It's the physics of cooperation gravity guided by intuition, not brute power, but balance. Perhaps, walking stones, weren't a miracle unique to Easter Island, but a forgotten language of ancient engineering, whispered in granite, basalt, and tuff. As Lipo's team mapped the island, another revelation appeared. The Moai scattered along RAPA Nui's ancient roads weren't random. They formed a gradient most unfinished statues lying within two kilometers of the Rano Ruraku Quarry, the birthplace of all Moai. Beyond that point, failures became rare. A clear exponential decay pattern the signature of transport, not ritual abandonment. Even the roads themselves told a story. Four and a half meters wide, carved concave into the earth like channels built to cradle rocking statues. Each route seemed tailored to motion, not wheels. It was as if the island itself was designed for walking stone. As new statues were built, workers likely extended these paths step by step cutting new sections of road, moving forward as the statue did. Sometimes, a statue broke. Sometimes, it tilted too far and fell fossilized mid-journey, frozen in place for centuries. And so the island became a map of motion, a fossilized choreography. Now, nearly a thousand years later, physics confirms what myth preserved. The Moai didn't just represent ancestors. They embodied them given literal movement, guided by living hands, walking from the quarry toward the sea. Each one was a bridge between the material and the spiritual, between memory and motion. A monument that walked so the past could keep moving forward. Maybe that's why they all face inland watching over the villages, guardians forever in mid-step. And maybe that's the secret of Rapa Nui, not that its people defied physics but that they understood it long before the word existed. They carved stone to dance with gravity, they sang to keep time with mass and motion, and in their chants, the impossible became ordinary. When modern science reawakened their method, something subtle shifted, a myth returned to life. A lost genius spoke again through stone and data. Because the truth was never buried it was standing there all along, waiting to walk once more.